They say when it rains, it pours. So we have taxes, levies and scandals making a violent convergence that somehow point at that tired payslip. President Ruto is adamant that the housing levy is both a mission and a sacrifice, even as questions mount on whether it is a tax or not. The on the scandal's front, Kemsa, the giant medical supplies agency, is asserting its authority with an early lead in the race of public wrongs. Now, in the old days, figures were cooked, but this week, Kemsa is serving a menu of cooked documents, or more specifically, tender documents. We count the fingers in the till and trace the hands backwards. And are Kenyans consuming the proverbial poisoned chalice, literally? We would only say no if we knew where one million kilos of condemned sugar are tonight. But we may just offer a preliminary list of suspects. My take tonight ventures to the recommended language of governance, an omission that was made by Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya 2010, which should have listed all the values that should include how those who govern should speak to the governed. On Samson's tonight, is there really any sense in conducting public participation sessions? Jamila's memo piles up the entry of the overworked Ministry of Health. And on Kaikai's Kai kicker, adios Nurdin, and a short list of recommendations for the next occupant of the Office of Director of Public Prosecutions. The gang is here. This institution must be clean. We are going to uproot all the roots, all the evil spirits that have been planted in this institution. It doesn't go. It would seem Madimonis are at play once again in this country, this time in the Ministry of Health. Lady, gentlemen, Good evening. Thank you for being here and thank you as well. The hashtag is Newsgang at Citizen TV Kenya. You can weigh in on our discussions tonight. So let's begin there. A scam. I mean, I think today is Thursday and we've had two scams break in, in what, two days, a day of each other. Sam, let's start with you. Just sort of bring us briefly as to how this started. Maybe I don't know which one you want to start with. It seems we're spoiled for scared. choice today with the scandals. You know, sugar is supposed to be sweet, <laughs> but it's not. So let me begin with Kemsa. Okay. Um, because, look, it's, 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 I don't know if it's right to say it's that time again, uh, because the past few years I've seen the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority reporting a bad story every other time. And this time round, of course, I remember last week working on a story that is about the Global Fund, that uh, they had written some uh, report indicating that they are going to move away from the procurement uh, through an open international tender system. And they were going to do it through wambo.org, meaning that um, the mosquito nets, 10.2 million of them that were required to uh, boost the uh, malaria campaign in the country, and this is a procurement that has that started some six months ago. That was in November last year. So you have the Minister of National Treasury requesting um, KEMSA to go ahead and procure nets that will be used to help the people that are in some, I think there are some 23 counties or thereabouts that are um, um, mosquito infested. So you have, of course, the paper trail uh, between uh, KEMSA and the government uh, just going ahead to indicate what specifications are required. And so the study that we were doing last week was about how KEMSA had bungled the process and therefore uh, that tender was going away uh, to be implemented by uh, the procurement arm of uh, Global Fund. And I remember listening to the chief executive office of KEMSA, that is Terry Ramadani, her saying that indeed what they had been doing was in accordance with the procurement laws. It's only that uh, the Global Fund was dissatisfied with what was happening. And I think it's, it's good to listen to her um, so that we see how she was putting into context and especially ensuring that um, she was able to defend the authority itself in this process. If you look at the detail of it, 
they were responsive. We may differ on terms of what exactly is it that they have looked at. And that whole comprehensive report has been done. But we stand by the evaluations that we did, and we agreed with them that since there is this query that has been raised here and this one that has been raised here, if we are to redo this, we won't be able to do it in time. Right, and, and so she was here defending mm -hmm. what they had been doing because Kemsa had decided that it was supposed to be Shobika Impex as well as um, Patek uh, that was supposed to be delivering those nets. But the Global Fund came and looked at um, the process that um, Kemsa had gone through and decided that, in fact, these two companies that Global Fund had set, I mean, th that Kemsa had settled on, should not have even gone through the first stage. The first phase is where you review the documentation that has been presented by different bidders. But now the bigger story was, in a sense, and that is why why the principal secretary in charge of um, uh, public health and professional standards, that is Dr. Josephine Buru, is no longer in office. Mm -hmm. uh, she had written a letter, I think it was sometime Feb 2021, I think, yeah. which was just yes. about two days to the uh, deadline of um, when funds, I mean, firms that were interested in bidding for these nets were supposed to be filing their responses. Uh, so for her, her mistake was that she wrote to KEMSA asking them to extend the deadline to 10th of March. And the basis of that was that she needed the specifications of the net, nets Change. changed. Mm. I, I think oblivious or maybe ignoring the fact that there had already been a discussion on what those specifications in are supposed 2019. to be. In 2019. Exactly, in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yes, the KEMSA CEO went ahead to uh, agree and extend the deadline, but then again advised the National Treasury that this communication has come from the Principal Secretary in the Public Health Department, and this is what you've done. But you found the National Treasury saying, no, no, don't do that. Retain the specifications that they were and continue the procurement as it were, only that now the extension of uh, bidding period was still to remain at uh, 10th of uh, much. But then again, now you see later on, when now the deal is being cancelled, this is when you're seeing the president taking action against the principal secretary. Yeah. And of course, there's been a lot of conversations, people saying that, um, how are you taking action against Dr. Josephine Buru, yeah. knowing that uh, KEMSA is an, is an authority, is under the mandate of the medical services department. But you realize that the specific areas of uh, malaria and anti-malaria uh, programs are specifically under the Department of Public Health. Yeah. And, and the correspondence but, but, as well. But, exactly. yes, but, but Jamila, you know, the, the, the PS also was, was particularly involved in this procurement process, right? She wrote emails and... Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's actually the letter that uh, Sam Gituk is talking about. Yeah. Um, raising questions about uh, the specifications on which type of yeah. nets were supposed to be procured. And as I've said, in 2019, the Kenya government and Global Fund agreed on these specifications. These are the type of nets that we want, 10.2 million nets uh, for the malaria program. And we've talked about how Global Fund has supported Kenya since mm. 2003 for malaria, TB, HIV, AIDS programs. But here you come in uh, 2023 saying, well, we want to change uh, the specifications. That's what prompted uh, Terry Ramadani to say, well, because uh, this letter has come, we can rectify the error that you've pointed out mm -hmm. and extend uh, the, the, the closure of the tender was supposed to have been on 23rd of February and they extended it by another 14 days to close on 10th. Now, when they did that, Global Fund wrote back the next day and said, well, the nets being procured are what they call prath uh, pyrethroid and not PBO. Therefore, the requirement of the PBO should not be included in the tender document. So this was all about the specifications, the specifications. of the tender, what was needed, which companies were eligible, exactly. sort of in, in, in a nutshell. And, and, even, I'm and, so, and sorry, yeah. when we talk about companies, some, some would say that maybe they were trying to change these specifications to suit particular companies that maybe they had wanted to give the tender to. And in this way, you are, you are disregarding the procedure, mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you are costing us the opportunity to do business with the Global Fund, you are costing us almost 370 million Million shoes that the government would have made from this deal. You're looking at the 10.2 million mosquito nets that would have gone to have helped Kenyans who needed malaria still kills in yeah. this country. And then when you look at, 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 at the history of KEMSA and, and other scandals, the COVID billionaires, 17 billion, they're always involved people in authority. Yeah. 
management, yeah. government. And then now you look at the trickle down effect and who it ends up affecting is, is that Kenyan. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'll get to you, Linus, in a moment. But, you know, we're talking about, you know, billions of shillings. Uh, but the cabinet secretary for health, Susan Nakumicha, was quick to point out that this was something that was nipped in the bud before the tender uh, could have been awarded and, and money paid out. Let's listen to uh, Susan Nakumicha, the CS, who, who talks about, uh, you know, no money having been lost at least yet. Uh, loss of funds, not as yet, except of course the cost of uh, advertising for a tender, the cost of staff having to sit and uh, do an evaluation, you know, just the administrative cost. But in terms of actual value of money lost, not yet, because the tender was now going to be awarded. So maybe at the point of award is when we can speak about a uh, loss of funds. However, it taints and uh, portrays weaknesses in our systems. And that's what I want us to talk about, the weaknesses in our systems. Listen, um, this isn't the first scandal we've seen. In fact, it seems um, there is a play here. There's, there's an MO, there's a way this works. We've seen uh, scandals like, like these before. I mean, um, you know, even while we talk about that, we'll come back and talk about a Global Fund in a moment and the role that they play. But listen, um, in our health sector, but Global Fund has actually raised issues on Kemsa's procurement methods in the past. This yeah. is not the first time. Yeah. Um, in March of 2022, they in fact found um, that uh, 908,000 mosquito nets, 1.1 million condoms, and 10 million shillings worth of TB drugs were missing from the Kemsa warehouse. Um, they said they found uh, suspected fake suppliers who were demanding over a billion shillings from Kemsa. Uh, medicines were lost and possibly sold in the black market. And this, while there's a shortage of medicines at public hospitals um, in the country. And then, uh, you know, they raised a couple of uh, flags, poor internal controls on warehousing and inventory. That's how you have, you know, drugs and, and that sort of thing missing. And remember then, Kemsa was also involved in the huge COVID-19, um, you know, uh, equipment scandal, the PPEs, the, you know, and everything that was needed. Linus, th there's an architecture here, right? There's a way this happens, not just at, in Kemsa, but, you know, in the country when it comes to um, scams. Absolutely. And um, what was really going on here, it's not... Um, what they call rocket science at all. There was a very clear attempt by somebody somewhere to tailor make, tailor make the uh, mosquito nets uh, tender for a particular company. And it comes as no surprise. It comes as absolutely no surprise because there is this culture mm. uh, that we have in this country where tenderpreneurship is one of the most well-paying businesses in this country. Procurement is where? Procurement that, is a space. Yeah. Yeah. It is the reason you see how competitive our politics is. And when governments come to office, there is this mentality of uh, plunder that, that comes in. Um, I remember in uh, 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 2003, when the National Rainbow Coalition uh, came to office. And later on, there were scandals that came up, um, specifically Anglo leasing, mm. with the whistleblower being the uh, permanent secretary in charge of integrity, uh, that, that was uh, 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 Gidongo. Mm. And um, Michaela Rong later wrote a book mm. titling it aptly. Mm. Mm. It is our <laughs> turn to, to eat. eat. Make no mistake. The people who were on both sides of campaigns last year had something in terms of immediate desires that needed to be fulfilled depending on the outcome of the election. It's Kenya Kwanza UDA that came through and not Azimio. I would not be surprised if it, it doesn't matter which way the election would have gone, this was supposed to happen. And this is just a start. We are yet to see a lot of these things. Mm. Because there are so many people, you, you keep hearing even on official uh, uh, communication that we need to, to, 
to reward loyalists. Mm. There'll be loyalists who'll be out there trying to reward themselves. And in the language of, that has been used in this country, which is tenders, government tenders, supply such and such and make your money back. In 1997, uh, as a young reporter starting out, I remember covering the uh, Karura Forest, uh, the hiving off of part of mm -hmm. Karura Forest uh, and, and, and for private development. Yeah. And we went uh, into an investigative uh, assignment to find out who is it and why. And actually, uh, for most of the plots that we um, discovered, because we found the map of how the land has been divided and then uh, it was being cleared, much of the land was actually to go to people who had played a role in financing Kanu in the 1997 election. So this was 98, actually, and 99, uh, when we were doing uh, uh, th this, this story. So that has never stopped. Look, let's look at Kemsa. Mm. Kemsa is, should be a gazetted feeding trough <laughs> um, for such needs. Because why is Kemsa, year in, year out, a venue of corruption? Mm. You can almost just close your eyes and be sure there'll be a scandal at Kemsa. Mm. The reason is there is multi, there, there's a lot of money in, uh, in, the, in the medical supplies area. Mm -hmm. Number two is there's a lot of donor funding in the medical supplies mm. uh, th uh, through Kemsa. And here is my bet. We would not have known what was going on in uh, Kemsa mm. had it not been for Global Fund, who is an external player. This is, this is uh, a donor trying to play by the rules that look, work with the rules that we agreed on. Had it not been, if Kemsa was entirely operating with just Kenyans and local resources, we would not know mm. that uh, there was even a change of the specifications yeah. to suit uh, company A or, or company B. So this is uh, really un unfortunate. And there's one thing that it also points at, and that is, unfortunately, the culture of relying on supervision as a country. Mm. Surely you are working with a donor, but you can't be trusted to follow the processes. Mm. Remember, this is such a good deal. Uh, Global Fund are not only giving you money to buy the, the mosquito nets, they'll also pay for <laughs> the use of the storage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, can you just Sorry. imagine that as a person, at a personal <laughs> level? You're given a gift and then you also paid to put it in your house. Yeah, it's a good deal. But now greed says, no, 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 no. It's, it's the, the other one that we want. We're not happy with uh, the little that ends, ends up here. So we're in, again in a very embarrassing space. I also remember um, when the Langata Road was being constructed. Yeah. And I remember the, the World Bank director in Nairobi called Harold Wackman. Mm -hmm. uh, he literally used uh, a, a, a ruler to measure the amount of uh, uh, tarmac mm -hmm. that had been put there. And uh, he was very, very upset. And he said, this is not to, according to specifications. Yeah. So 20 plus years later, we still can only work under very close supervision. Yeah, uh, you know, when you mention the Global Fund and in terms of the funding, let's just put that into context with what Global Fund does. So uh, they basically fund um, HIV, uh, TB and malaria. And in the country between uh, January 2018 and June 2021, Kenya got 384 million US dollars in grants. Huh? So this is not even a loan. This is grants that were given. So how they work is that uh, the country takes the lead and prioritizes the areas that they want in these three areas, um, areas of priority for these three diseases. And then now they go to the Global Fund, they make an application, and then it's a Global Fund that takes them through, these are the specifications we require, and then um, they grant the money. In fact, if you want to just take a look at all the money we have received from Global Fund since its start, since 2003, Global Fund has disbursed to Kenya 160 billion shillings for HIV, 
malaria, TB, and then of course, COVID, um, you know, when, uh, when the pandemic hit uh, in 2019. And they are so structured, they have what is called an Office of the Inspector General, which goes through, um, you know, all of the processes uh, that we have laid out. So all of these monies, by the way, are grants. Um, and like you say, of course, because they are grants uh, funded by some of the top countries in the world, US, France, Germany, and uh, Japan, I believe. Uh, then they have strict specifications for how they want that to happen. And if you take a look then at further scandals, then there was the uh, you know, COVID-19 uh, scandal. And again there, it happened just like you said, Linus. Um, losses in billions of shillings up to 2.3 uh, billion. And history repeating itself. Today, we put in the new board, right? Well, um, in 2020, Uhuru disbanded the board and the top management um, of KEMSA. Uh, the chair, who was then Kembe Gitura, was in fact moved to the Communication Authority. Mm -hmm. Mary Chadime, Mary Chao Mwadime, Mwadime. sorry, Mwadime. Yeah. Uh, took over. And then you have some of the board members, you know, who are here today, including Terry Ramadani. Um, and you can take a look at that, even in the way in which we, we handle these monies, wastefulness. So eight months after the COVID funds were awarded, that was on uh, the last day of December 2020, only 15% had been used eight months later. So even these grants that we're getting, how are we using them? Are we using them to full potential? By March of 2021, only 31% of the funds that uh, were needed had been used. And bear in mind that COVID-19 was a very emergent threat. It was very immediate. It was here and now. Not to say that malaria, TB and others are not, but you remember the, the heightened tension and attention that there was um, to the country. So here is that tense relationship between KEMSA and Global Fund, and they know where those loopholes are. They do, and 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 because I was saying that it's happened before, but they're still here. They're still giving us 160 billion shillings. Yeah. But then, Yvonne, you, you talk about um, 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 KEMSA and the fact that there was money that was not utilized. Mm. As we speak now, um, there's a stock out at uh, Kemsa stores in terms of uh, supply of, of, of uh, drugs and, and um, drugs and medical supplies, because there are some documents that we, we had seen and, and a story that we did over the weekend yeah. that shows that um, Kemsa stores are facing a stock out of about 390 out of a possible 462 medical commodities. What do I say, mean when I say medical commodities? I'm talking about painkillers, antibiotics. I'm talking about gloves, syringes, cotton wool, bandages, plasters, you know, yellow fever vaccines. Hakuna kutosha. And then you try and wonder, why don't we have enough of that? Because I remember um, Governor uh, of Tharakanithi spoke out and said, there isn't enough. We are having now to go and, and try and procure some of these commodities from private entities who are charging us more. And it is because of this. In July 2022, you know, the time we were all fixed on elections mm. and, and, and mm. the politics and campaigns, uh, I think most of the money was going into that. Some contractors hired by KEMSA to import personal protective equipment at the peak of COVID-19 pandemic two years earlier were getting paid. In fact, a total of about 890 billion million shillings was paid to these entities last year. So priority was given to paying suppliers instead of uh, cancer spending that money for his core mandate, mm. which is to supply drugs and medical supplies to government hospitals and health centers. So kuna upungufu, kuna uhaba, but then now mumeli pawatu. And those are hundreds of millions of shillings. And on top of that, um, wakuna madeni. According to KEMSA payables, about uh, one a day, about 3.7 billion shillings that they've not paid. That includes... Why? But they're paid for storage. Operations, no. They have not paid for operations. They've not paid Cambry. They've not paid uh, data accrued of, for supplies during COVID-19. They've not paid for an invoice COVID-19 receipt. They are, they are owed money for distribution of KEMSA supplies. There's, there's actually 150 million, which is listed as debt accrued for distribution alone this year for the period of January to March. So, my dear, in Ohio, you have about 3.7 billion shillings you need to pay, my dear. On top of that, unadaiwa madawa na na medical supplies which you've not paid for. So, akuna kitu mzuri utasema. There's nothing good. So, is there any sense here? Really? <laughs> well, um, I, I think before we move so fast, uh -huh. it would be good to listen to Daniel Rono because I think he goes in history as the shortest serving uh, uh, chairperson yeah. of KEMSA. Yes. He was here on JKL and yeah. he was making some explanation. Listen. We went fishing. They gave us a job to do. Uh, with the timelines, we 
we miss the bit of uh, procurement. So we are saying we are doing the, uh, the distribution, we are doing the warehousing, uh, the bit of um, the procurement, we have agreed with them. Because of the timelines, you do it. So I looked at him because I met him along the corridors and I felt so sorry for him because serving for three months, you're so committed to the extent that you want to work with the chief executive uh, officer of KEMSA to come and explain what's going on. But then that changes. I mean, uh, a few days later, you don't have a job. And of course, uh, the presidential action, he had also promised that he was going to take uh, such an action. But I think there's a very big problem at KEMSA, especially when it comes to matters of governance and even how they do their job. Because for instance, if you had to even focus at how uh, the board was being replaced. I remember in, in April 2021 when Kembi Gitura was leaving mm. and Mary Modimo was coming on board. This is um, a person that has worked in the USA. Uh, she yeah. has worked in the areas of uh, uh, supplies management and she was coming so that to reform it. At that time, there was a conflict between the government of Kenya and the USAID, as well as the Global Fund on how uh, the investigations into the scandal was going on, but also how the institution itself was managing um, internal affairs and the procurement of medical supplies uh, as it were. And she was coming to reform. Thereafter, she announced that there, there was going to be uh, some staff restructuring. She sent a lot of uh, <coughs> staff members home uh, to work from home. At that time, the, uh, the establishment uh, KEMSA had a whole 922 uh, staff working for it. Never mind that uh, the approved establishment was about 341. So you wonder the more than 500 people that, was, or that were working at KEMSA, how did they even start working there? It was, there was never an approval. And I remember that time a press conference that she had called and she was saying that uh, as they go home, they're going to call members of the National Service to come and assist in terms of management of especially the warehouses. But she was not very committed on what exactly they were coming to do and how many were mm. coming. But then because of court injunctions, that has never been concluded. I had today the Cabinet Secretary for Health, uh, Susan Wafula Nahumicha, saying that um, um, all those workers, more than 200 that have been working from home, have now been yeah. recalled and yeah. should be reporting back to the office. And she's even saying that she's going, like we had at, at the start of the show, she's going for uh, the evil spirits within KEMSA. I'm just concerned, will this happen? Because remember, once upon a time, like you said, those COVID-19 yeah. um, billionaires, uh, investigations are conducted. There was a 21-day mm. um, notice, yeah. uh, or rather a requirement that was given by then President Uhuru Kenyatta, during which a report was expected. That was issued on 26th of August in the year 2020. We are now in 2023. We still don't know um, what has happened. Yeah. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, is leaving office without giving us uh, what exactly happened about uh, the COVID billionaires. Maybe you should listen to him one more time. It came back and we were still not satisfied. And um, you can ask ESCC and they will uh, they have undertaken to continue the investigations. And if I was malicious, my friend, if I was malicious, a lot of those people come from Upade uh, Azimio. But I'm not going to do that unless there is evidence. And I can assure everybody that if, if today evidence is brought, packaged in a certain, uh, in a certain manner, and we discover that this is going to lead to miscarriage of justice, we will withdraw. All right, so that's the outgoing DPP, Nurdin Haji. That was Feb 9th, 2023, mm -hmm. um, more than two years since uh, that uh, ultimatum was given by President Kenyatta. We still don't know what the fate of these investigations are. We understand the ESCC is now investigating this new matter. And of course, action has been taken. The president has fired <coughs> a PS who served for 165 days, mm. five months, 14 days, way before he invited her to our studios. But that's where we are. Uh, but you know, um, and, and before we even move to other conversations, do we see similarities then with the sugar scam? I mean, some of these things are incredulous. You remember the, the tall tales that were told to the then uh, committee uh, led by Abdul Somad Sharif. Um, you remember the people, I think there was one, one gentleman, I will never forget, who was asked how he knew of uh, the COVID-19 tenders. And he said he was walking by uh, the Kemsa headquarters outside and he decided to just pop in 
yeah, to Kemsa, you know, see what's up, you know, you know, how you guys doing? What's up? You know, <laughs> is there anything? And then he gets, oh, there's a tender. And um, in fact, I recall what he said, because that, that really got to me. He said he didn't even have a pen to fill that tender form and sign it. He had to ask for one. And voila, he walked away with a tender worth billions of shillings. There were other companies that uh, had never supplied any medical Shop and equipment. Buy. Um, you know, there was a young lady there who had no clue what she was doing there. Um, and then you get the similar tall tales again, um, you know, Linus, with, with the sugar scam. So this is sugar that had been condemned, um, declared unfit for human consumption. It's sitting somewhere in a warehouse, um, purportedly for either destruction or conversion into uh, industrial ethanol. And then they go and open uh, the, the warehouse, the, the container, and there is no sugar. And the sugar has disappeared. It disappeared. But the sugar has probably been sold. And it could be sugar that you are taking, particularly if you are a lawyer, you have to have at least two cups tonight before you go to bed. But I mean, you know, it's so incredulous. And yet, Linus, nobody gets successfully prosecuted and thrown behind bars. Those people treated that PAC um, thing, you know, literally like a joke. They went and said what they said. Uh, politicians um, went and made a mockery of it. And here again, we are with, with something that it's just, I mean, they were locked there for five years, the one million kilos of sugar, and then they're not there. Like, like, what is it? And yet nobody will be prosecuted. You know, if I was to convert that to a religious joke, I would say the sugar is risen. <laughs> <laughs> because you open and you know the containers, the way they, they yeah, look. Yeah, he is uh, not here. He is not risen. Here. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's because it's supposed to be this national yeah. mystery. Yeah. Uh, we are all in this state of not knowing. And shock. And, and, and <gasps> oh shock. my gosh, yes. where is how, it? How did that happen? Yeah. And I always like the way the institutions that should know better join us in shock. The, this marvel. Uh, DCI is investigating. Where were they before this happened? It's a million kilos of sugar. A it's million. Not, you know, it's not. Yes. It's not a packet. Ab absolutely. And of course, the huge question of why would we keep sugar that has been condemned and so regarded as poisonous for five years. That's a whole elective term. Mm -hmm. We don't destroy it because remember the, the, there were three options given. You either destroy it at the cost of... Um, mm. Of the importer. Of the importer, importer yes. Yeah. To return it to... Uh, to sender. To, to, to sender mm -hmm. at the cost again of the, of, of the importer. Mm -hmm. And the third option is what is supposed to have happened, yeah. which is convert this uh, to it, ethanol. Mm -hmm. And that has not happened. But again now, the question is not even where the sugar is. The question is who is playing these games. Mm -hmm. And tonight we have at least three suspects. Suspect number one is a cabinet minister, mm -hmm. or do we call them secretaries these days? Mm -hmm. A high-ranking cabinet secretary. They're supposed to be a member of parliament, and then they're supposed to be another political uh, leader um, who are under investigations. Mm -hmm. That is where we are tonight. Um, we, are, we should be hopeful to see where the investigations uh, uh, take us. Will they go to the, the full length, which is to show us that these are the suspects and these are the roles they played, and for this, they're going to go to, uh, to court. I think it's a wait and see game, but uh, that's where it stays right now. Uh, they are suspects, they are senior, they are serious people in government and parliament, and so we are waiting to see whether the investigators will actually come with those, uh, um, uh, you know what the DCI does with, the, with, with suspects. Because the day they'll start doing that is the day we'll start seeing accountability. The import business seems to me as a, like a place where there is lack of accountability. Um, whether you're talking of cancer, whether you're talking of uh, sugar, and there is one thing that will happen, uh, and, and it hasn't happened yet. And I don't know whether it has not happened yet or we don't know. 
You know, there is, there is a difference. It could be happening, but we, because we don't have global fund in the importation of maize. To, to blow the whistle. Yes, yes, yeah. to say how, how is the pro, pro, uh, process. Yeah. Because you can see even the, in the maize space, government and politicians especially like to try and lose Kenyans in technicalities. Mm. Oh, that, you know, it's, 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 you don't understand this. Just wait for the maize. It will come to your nearest uh, uh, depot. But we should highlight that maize is the other place to watch. Don't um, concentrate on the missing sugar alone. And yeah. if, if in case, like you've said, there are people who are under investigation. Now, in the past two, three days, we've seen suspension of senior officials from uh, KEMSA to the PS, to the entire board of KEMSA, to employees of Ministry of Health, Malaria Department, to now the Kenya Bureau of Standards, starting from the managing director to the director of quality assurance. We go all the way to KRA, 26 people have been suspended over the cont contaminated sugar scum. Then we should see more. Now, if there are already suspects that are being yeah. uh, uh, investigated, even senior or, or not, <coughs> as, as they may be. Absolutely. Because it doesn't make sense when you have the seal mm. that was, that's the, 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 the warehouse was sealed using KRA numbered seals. And then when people come less than two weeks later, there are seals there. The door is still locked. But when you open it, there's nothing. So between, uh, I think, 20th of April and 4th of May, what happened? Because that's where the sugar was. And then you have this multi-agency team, or MAT, that they call it, mm. coming now uh, to check. You know, actually, I actually just want us to listen to President Ruto's um, uh, bite when he was speaking at State House yeah. on how he will deal with, uh, uh, with, with, with KEMSA. Mm. I don't want to speak about it now. You will see results then? Yes, you will see results. Mr. Now, President, Mr. 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 Is, uh, I, want, I want to give you my commitment. I will clean up Kemsa. Whatever it takes, Mr. President, whatever it costs, I will clean up. Now, I, I think this is a very uh, good spirit. I, and I'm not talking of the spirits Nakumicha was talking about, <laughs> but, but the spirit displayed by the, by, by the president. Mm -hmm. He looks genuinely upset mm -hmm. about the events yeah. at, at Kemsa. I think the only saving grace for the country today is if the president keeps uh, at it, stay on the suspension roll, acting tough, um, and now go for the sugar, poisoned, uh, poisonous sugar barons. <laughs> Whoever they are, I think the president should continue with the trail he started with uh, uh, Kemsa. If he does that decisive action, especially in the space of these uh, few, few days, there'll be a huge difference. There'll be um, a message sent right across to government departments. And there's one thing that uh, should definitely be in the mind of the president. Government is huge. You wouldn't know what every mm -hmm. officer is doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There could be somebody out there yeah. taking advantage ah. of the silence, taking advantage of the absence of uh, supervision, and they can mess things up. So the tone set by the president on the, on the KEMSA issue is really commendable. He needs to take it to the new uh, frontiers, which is the sugar, the sugar thing, and also other spaces where accountability is, is lacking, uh, lacking right now. Now, there's something that the government must be realizing by now, just going by the KEMSA scandal alone. When you look at KEMSA, look at the names, the players, you have to suck uh, a permanent, a principal secretary, mm. rather. And you look at the communication trail. These are your officers. These are people you saw in just, just, yeah. just the other day. Yeah. So, the message going through is, you know, it can't be um, a party, a hunting party. Mm. You can't get into a coalition of, uh, of doing wrong things. And, and I think what has happened at KEMSA is actually positive in that, in that sense. That wrongdoing was, um, mm. was caught quite early. By the way, this time mm -hmm. we had not lost yeah. a cent yet. Yeah. Um, we, we can't even have the debate we had about uh, Aror Kimorer uh, when it comes to what has happened at KEMSA. In KEMSA, nothing has been lost. Mm. Nothing had been paid yet, but wrongdoing was tracked. And this time at paperwork stage, 
where you're trying to actually change uh, paperwork yeah. and you have a government officer writing and, and, and communicating as uh, um, narrated nicely by, by, by some. And then the wrongdoing has been punished with suspension, with, um, uh, and, and, and actually with the sucking mm -hmm. of, 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 the, of the permanent secretary. Let this me, is the thread yeah. the president and the tone the president is to set. But you know what will back him up now? is the criminal justice system working like it should. Mm -hmm. The withdrawals we have seen of corruption cases, say for Waluke, um, you know, with the big one and whatever else happened after that. But suspensions now need to be followed by sound investigations, charges in court, and if found guilty, you know, people are either jailed, any monies that were lost are returned. That needs to happen because sometimes you get the sense, and you look at the criminal justice system in a number of issues, including even with the McKenzie case. I mean, but you see what happens, the back and forth between the investigators, the office of, uh, of the DPP, uh, the judiciary, and then at the end of it, everybody says, not me, and they keep pointing fingers at each other. Then these suspensions um, really mean nothing. Um, if with all of this goodwill that he has to fix things, the next step should take um, effect, which is you know, proper uh, and full, the full distance with the criminal justice system. Sam, before we break. R right, and if you recall that on Tuesday, there was that communication that came from State House about the meeting with the cabinet, and it was clear his message to the cabinet as secretaries on how he's not going to tolerate um, corruption and people have to utilize the resources, public resources for uh, the public good. So it, it, it will be interesting to see because it is total contrast from what you've seen from previous presidents. If you recall President Kenyatta, even when there are cabinet secretaries or principal secretaries that are mentioned um, adversely in different uh, scandals, mm. he'll take his time up until there's a proper uh, arrest and arraignment of a cabinet secretary or a principal secretary, that's when uh, you'd find that um, the cabinet but, but, secretary- But Sam, you remember the list of shame in 2015 yes. in his uh, you know, address to the National yes, yes, uh, Assembly, was, uh, names you know, heads rolled. Mm -hmm. Some cabinet secretaries were taken to court, and I think we just saw a withdrawal of that yes. how many years later. In fact, just recently, we yeah. saw the current chairperson of the NHIF, mm -hmm. um, former CS Kamau, yeah. uh, of course, being set free now. Uh, so it, it is quite um, a difference in terms of how they approach this matter. So it will be interesting to see will you just end up with termination, or, or there will be proper investigations and people? really uh, brought to book because again, things are working to his side because he has already appointed his own um, officers. In this case, the Director of Criminal Investigations is new. Uh, soon, the Director of Public Prosecutions will be a person appointed by him. And uh, again, we're waiting to see what the judiciary does. But also, it is also necessary to note that um, this sugar that they're talking about, a million kilograms, at a time that the price of sugar at the moment is about uh, between 200 sh shillings and 220 shillings per kilo, if that was to be converted into money, if the one million was to be converted into money, that's about mm. 200 million shillings. So you can see there are people that have really made a bit of calculation here, but it would be very unfortunate that this kind of sugar can actually get to the market uh, five years later. Mm. This is sugar that was supposed to be destroyed in 2018, yeah. but now, it was supposed now to be distilled into Ethan. industrial ethanol. Yeah. Ethanol is highly, uh, is, uh, it vaporizes quite fast. I don't know if <laughs> I that's see what, what you happened. avoided oh saying. <laughs> <laughs> With respect to ethanol, I don't know which sugar you're seeing for 200 bob, Bana. It's, 20 a kilo. It's, uh, 10 a kilo. That's yeah, a kilo. A kilo. Yeah, okay, 10, yeah. so therefore 400, 400 the, yeah. plus. The good one or the poisoned one? Oh, who knows? Question. Okay. Yeah, who might be spending more on. Uh, what will actually kill you, literally. All right, so that's that. But listen, there's also the cost of living. Um, and uh, the president is saying a few things about that, including just today, the president was asking Kenyans to make a sacrifice um, for um, affordable housing for everyone to be a reality in this country, as has happened in Singapore. We'll talk about that and the cost of living, the cost of fuel. And um, just when are you going to get cheaper gas? Not sure. We'll be back after the break of that, I'm sure. We'll see you shortly. <laughs>